you are helping each other, that's fine, but go quietly with it so people can shh, so people can hear what I'm doing up here. I'm going to go through the quiz preview, making sure you're going through right steps and getting right answers to things. So if you've got something going haywire, let me know as we're going through, but I also want to make sure. I'm going to be real specific in the things I do. I am not going to skip steps on things. Like, for instance, here. Okay? Square root of 60, negative 64. There's no x squared there. This is not a plus minus. Pull an i out to make it positive, and the square root of 64 is 8. Plain old 8i. It is not, let me repeat again, it is not plus minus. That only happens on problems like 8 and 9, where we're actually solving a quadratic. If you do plus minus on me, you're going to get docked a little bit. Several of you asked me about 2. Okay, again, let's take this in pieces. If I just look at this part first, you pull an i out, so the i square root of 16. What's the square root of 16? 4. So that would be 4i. That's just for the negative 16 part. So the rest of it is kind of blending the review in. What little root number is out here when I don't see one? 2. So back when we were doing exponent stuff, you remember instead of we wanted to write it as an exponent, we do it as exponent divided by root, and we did some old school division. So for instance here, how many times does my root 2 go into my exponent? 3. Okay, it goes in once. Do I have any left over? How many? 1. But well, 1 has to stay under the radical. Remember, it's old school division. 2 goes into 3 once, but I have a remainder of 1. The remainder stays in the radical. The amount of times it goes in whole gets out. This, that's just an assumption. Sort of like when you see x and you say, What's the exponent on it? I don't see the 1, but I know it's there. When you're doing a square root, it's just assumed that it's a 2. It kind of works the same way. And then what about our y's here? How many times 2 going to 8? 4. Do I have any left over? Nope. That craziness is the answer. Okay? So how many times your root goes into your exponent? The variable one. It's part of what we're doing here. We're combining some review with what we're doing right now. Yeah, it, it can be crazy because you're seeing all these variables. I'm, I'm with you. So 3 and 4, be careful because I saw some of you foiling here. If there's a plus or minus in the middle, we're not foiling yet. That's not until we get down to 6. Here, I'm just combining like terms. Negative 6 plus 8 is 2. 1i minus 7i. Minus 6i. I'm done. Treat the i just like you would a variable term, like x or n or anything. Just combining like terms. Yeah, we're going to get to that in just a second on 4, but yes. Because when you get to 4, I'm still just combining like terms, but I need to distribute that negative through. I'm leaving the first part alone. Negative and negative is positive. Negative and negative is positive. And now I'm just combining like terms. 4 plus 2 is 6. Negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5i. I'm done. Okay? When you see pluses or minuses in the middle, we're just combining like terms. So here I got a little more distributing to do. I'll get that distributed through, being very careful with my sign. Oh, I didn't see my negative there with the Y there. Thank you. Yes. My w Yes, minus 6 actually would be better. I'd have preferred it that way myself. So negative 12 and negative 12 is negative 24. 
negative 6 and positive 24 is 18. And that one's set. So 3, 4, and 5. Distribute if there's parentheses, and you need to. You can, but it's one of those things, standard form is a plus bi. So, yeah, I wouldn't count off. If you had 18 minus, 18 9 minus 24, I wouldn't take off of that. But 6, there is no plus or minus in the middle. Now you need to foil this out. You need to multiply it out. And some of you, I started to notice, are having some issues here and there with remembering what you've done and what you haven't. So remember, if FOIL's okay with you, then don't worry about what I'm doing here. You can just FOIL like you normally do. But otherwise, I would suggest kind of making yourself a little box, because then as you multiply what's on the edges to fill in what's in the middle, Then I know I've done everything, but when I get to here, before I combine my terms that are alike, what's I squared equal? Negative 1. So negative 3 times negative 1, this is really positive 3. So 56 plus 3 is 59, okay, because I'm not multiplying once the box is full. 21 minus 8 is 13. What I get? 56 plus 3. Yep. 7. We're back to our friend the conjugate. Basically, it just means change the sign in the middle. And we're basically going to be doing what we just did in 6. But we're doing it to the numerator and the denominator. So what I'm going to do here is, is help some of you out on time's sake to make sure we hit everything. I'll tell you what this is going to look like. Yep, the box thing for both the numerator and denominator would be an excellent idea for a lot of you. Yeah, but I want to. Sh I just I like to show once you foil things out what this is going to look like. You can just multiply the coefficients on the first and last terms and add them up. So like here, I could just do one plus nine and get the ten that I'm going to get. Because here, with i squared being negative one, three times negative one, negative three. And negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. So when I go to simplify it, I'm like 6 minus 3 is 3. Negative 18i minus 1 more. Minus 19i. And 1 plus 9 is 10. You just got to remind yourself on these. Were you okay foiling over here? Yeah. Okay. You're doing the same thing here. Whatever sign you see in the middle, in the denominator, just flip it. And then you're just foiling the top and the bottom out. Okay? Now that you get to the quadratics, now we're getting plus minus for answers. Add my 10 over. Again, don't square root until you've isolated as far as you can. Divide by 3. And when you square root to solve your quadratic, two things to remember. First of all, it's plus or minus. You've also got to remember to pull your eye out. Now, if in this case, if the radical breaks down as well, you need to do that. Square root of 4 is 2, so that gets to hang out with i. The 3 doesn't, it stays underneath the radical.
And again, to make sure we get to everything, I want to make sure at least one of everything. I'm going to tell you the answer you should get for number nine. Square root of four is two. Okay, that gets out front with my eye now. Yes, sir. Divide 96 by negative 4 first. Divide. Because right now you're multiplying. Then you would. Yeah. Okay. Complex numbers. I talked to a couple of you about this. If this was x squared minus 49 instead, you do x plus 7, x minus 7. Okay, most of you were fine telling me that. The only difference when it's plus in the middle, it's still x plus 7, x minus 7, but there's an i in there now. That's the only difference between that and some of the squares. It's sets of exactly the same except there's i's in there on your second turn. That's the only difference. That's it. Yep. Completing the squares, that big old fancy thing we were doing. So again, you may have to go back and look at your 5-5 five, five notes to kind of remind you on how this goes. I need my x terms together, so I'd add the 14 over. Negative 37 can stay where it's at. Once I get here again, Take your B term, the number in front of X, divide it by 2, and square it. That gets added oops, I lost my X, to both sides of the equation. Yeah, it's just an X. I lost my X. So here again, the shortcut, what multiplies to 49 and adds to 14, I just steal my 7. 7 and 7. And now it's just like what we were doing up above. Square root it. Again, what multiplies to 49 and adds to 14? 7 and 7. You'll always get that same number. Does 12 break down? Okay, 4 and 3. Notice it's not a negative, so there's no i involved. And then we minus the 7 over. The right answer. And just like I did up above on 9, I'm going to give you the answer for 12. So as you're working through, you can get yourself set with that. All right. Party's heading over. 13. Vertex form. We're not going to move anything. We're going to do our thing with B. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Squared is 4. So that's the same thing as completing the square, except now I'm going to add it to the Y. I'm going to add it with my x's that are going to be isolated here. Again, this is all in 5, 5 as well. This will turn into a perfect square, just like it did before. Steal my minus 2, and I'm going to subtract my 4 over. which will give me, in turn, my vertex. <coughs> 14 and 15, I'm just going to give answers. 
Yeah, for vertex. The vertex. So for your two quadratic formulas, since we just did for playing with that yesterday, I'll give you answers for those. That's basically just knowing the formula and being careful. So I want to make sure we get time on these last three to chat a little bit. Of what? 90, 1 and 90, 2 and 45, 6 and 15, 9 and 10. I don't know which one might work. Sketches. Draw a sketch of a quadratic equation that has one real solution. Remember, solutions are your x-intercepts. You can draw a parabola as long as it only touches one place on the x-axis. It can be anywhere you want it to be, as long as it only touches once. Well, you try to do the best you can. But yeah, you need to try just like a parabola. Okay? Whenever we're talking about solutions, if we look at the 5, 6 node, it says wherever it crosses the x axis, yeah, I could draw one here, here, doesn't matter. The next one's a little tricky though two imaginary solutions. That just means it's not going to cross the x axis at all. Again, it can be anywhere. It could be over here, be here, here. But if it's imaginary, it's going to be there. If there was two real solutions, then I'd just make sure it crosses the x-axis. If it has two imaginary, it doesn't touch at all. If I wanted two real solutions, then maybe I do something like this where it crosses in two places. Yes, ma'am. You can have two imaginary, or you can have two real, or you can have one real. Good question. Will you do the last one? I will. Area of a rectangle. Length times width equals area. I'm going to distribute that through. And this one, you're actually going to have some choices here in a second. I'm going to choose to bring the 48 over. And I would try factoring them. Now, you could use the quadratic formula. As we said, the quadratic formula is like duct tape. You can use it on everything. But in this case, if I went to slide and divide using it however I was going to use it, okay? My slide and divide or guess and check would get me to this factored form. Okay? So if you go and you try to slide and divide later, this is what you should end up with. Well, when you set those each equal to zero, you're like, ooh, but I got two answers. But can I have a negative side of a rectangle? No. So my x is 6, so my dimensions would be 6, 18 minus 10 is 8, would be 6 by 8. Again, especially a couple of them that we didn't do. Go back and look later. If really desperate, this sheet's already on the website, the blank one. Shoot, get the blank one to work back through it with me again. Okay? But tomorrow, when you come in, homework check backed up by the quiz. So be ready. What? Okay, what part don't you get? 